Hey everybody, today I'm showing you the Two Trees SK-1 3D printer. This is the first 3D printer that I'm covering on the channel. I've got a lot of laser toys and plasma toys. These guys were kind enough to send me this unit to review. This is a fast 3D printer, FDM, a speed of 700 millimeters per second. They did send filament, so everything that I would need to actually 3D print something is included. Let's see what's inside. This is a big 3D printer, but it comes very well packaged, so you're not gonna have to worry about getting damaged during the shipping. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna need more, probably not for the test, but if I do, I know where to get it. Very tough construction, so you don't have to worry about it getting damaged. Just wanna slowly remove this. There's also these here for protection. Everything is inside here. So when you get it, everything is neatly stored there and you have to remove it, get your screen. 4.3 inches, you can easily attach it. You can even see here. So even without reading the guide, it's pretty straightforward. It seems to be very well put together and very intuitive design. You have your manual, basic information and has all the information here. This is your filament rack. All the connectivity options are here. You have all the tools that you need, your tiny wrenches, your cable, your filament, USB flash drive, antenna. When you open this, you see these, and these look out of place and they shouldn't be there. They're there for protection and you just have to remove them. Once you remove these, you just have to install the filament cradle, the antenna, and the screen. Three-step process after this, and that's about it. This side, you have all your connectivity ports. I have to just attach this antenna here. Next, you have to install the filament rack, and again, it's on this side, so right here. You have to use this screen holder. Now that that's installed, you have to then attach it to the screen. This is what you have in the back. Now that's taken care of and that's about it. Everything is assembled. Now you just have to connect it to your computer or upload your designs. Now that it's assembled, you want to make sure that you get the voltage right. So here you can change it. You have to push it like that. I need 110. This is metal, so you can see that it is a little bit heavy, but it's not that much. You just have to be careful to handle it right so you don't damage it. A couple of clarifications before getting it started. I cover a lot of lasers and plasma toys on the channel, but I've never done 3D printers. This is the first time I'm actually turning this on. I just want to see with you whether this is user friendly for someone who's a beginner or not. If you're new to this field, you may enjoy this better. If you see any mistake as far as the process goes, that's probably my fault because I don't do a whole lot of 3D printing. But I hear that this is a very user friendly 3D printer. So let's see. Just have to plug it in, start it. So here you have a touch screen interface, you can unload and load, you can make the basic calibration, which is a four point calibration that you can do. You can change different settings. These are the networks that are available. If I want to, I can do wireless. You can upgrade your firmware. All the information is available here. So the first step is to calibrate. There are four steps. One of them, obviously the paper test, but let's do first the Z-Tilt. Step by step, you see those numbers, so it's going through them. You want to be patient with your 3D printer, if, especially if this is your first time. It's not, you may see something that's much faster on the internet, but it does take a little bit of time to calibrate. You want to make sure that you do it properly.
So this is now done. The next step is probe calibration. When you get to this point, you want to put a paper here and then you want to lower this a little bit enough to actually create a little bit of resistance but not much so when you press this these actually turn a little bit so you do this process until there's a little bit of resistance it's there save this now we go to the next step Now the final step. This is supposed to be the vibration test. Now that the calibration process is completed, I have to go and connect it to my network. I just have to choose my network here. You enter your passport and then you acquire an IP and then you'll be able to access the device from your smartphone, tablet or computer on the same network. This is the IP that you want to write down. This is how you're going to access it. I am going to use a computer, a desktop computer to upload the files, but I just want to show you that with an iPad even, I just entered that IP. Now your IP is going to be different. Yours is going to be whatever it shows here, but mine is that. So I'm gonna enter that and I can access different features. You go here, you can upload and print it. So this has a print volume of 256, 256 millimeters and it has a high speed of 700 millimeters per second. So these are the standard options. As far as the slicer software, I'm gonna use the Cura, but you can use other ones. You can use ABS, PLA, all these different materials. I'm just gonna use whatever that was provided. Let's see how it turns out. Just like my tablet, I can also access this on my laptop. This is a Windows 10 laptop. It should work on any platform pretty much as long as you have the connection and also on the same network and you have your IP down. And here again, I can go and upload. I have this flash drive that is included with the printer and it has all the files that I need. Depending on the slicer that you choose, the configurations are available. I'm using this, you can go with that. Even the slicer software is available. I actually went ahead and downloaded it from the website. It's a little bit more recent. So I've now created the project. I just need something to print. I can change my material here. ABS, PLA, things like that. So you just have to feed this here and just push it all the way as far as you can and then you're ready to print. So we're just loading it. Now we're running. I can turn the light on and off.
that is 100%. And this is now ready. So a few things I would say, the desk that you put this is important. This is a very thin desk. This is not something that you use in your workshop. You wanna make sure that you fit it properly. The paper test, you wanna make sure that's done right. If you don't get it right, if there is no resistance, you could end up having your model, for instance, moving while it's printing. I did the thermal image of this. So you wanna be careful with 3D printers. There are hot parts sometimes and you just wanna be careful what you touch. You also wanna be careful as far as removal. There are tools available to make sure that you remove this as best as possible. Overall, I found this 3D printer to be very easy to use. I don't have that much experience with 3D printers. It's not my thing, it's not my forte. But overall, if you have even a basic experience with G codes and design files, and you can just find something online. I use the basic filament that they sent there are others that you can buy and experiment with. What I would say is that it has a lot of features that you may not have to know when you're just getting it started, but if you wanna be a professional 3D printer or serious about 3D printer, it does require some studying. This is not a toy, so it's not a normal printer that you can just print papers on. There's a lot of learning to do as far as slicing the files and preparing them. Even with all that, this is very easy to use. Connecting it to the Wi-Fi was easy to use. This is my very first model. The file that was included in the USB drive was very helpful. I just put it in Cura and just sliced it and saved it and uploaded it. Now I'm gonna try to actually print a rook or a knight. Let's try a knight. I'm gonna slice it. I'm gonna save it to the disk. I didn't change any settings. It should work fine, let's see. This is the design that I'm using. It does require attribution, so I'm showing it here just so you know where to find it. This time I'm using a USB flash drive and this is very simple. So you go here, you go here, you choose USB and you go down and you can see the file. So I can select it here and I can choose print from here. So instead of going through my computer, I can just attach the flash drive and do it this way. Now I'm gonna select print. Tells me how long it's gonna take. So you can see how long you have left. This is a short print, it's about 11 minutes. I chose it on purpose because I didn't wanna go an hour or two. You can also turn the light on if you like, like that, so you can actually capture a video better or just see better how the progress is going. This is your fans, and you can control them as well. So it's coming around nicely, no issues. A little bit of vibration, but that's to be expected. So we're pretty much done. You see the temperature is dropping. Actually came out pretty well. Very impressive. Overall, one of the easiest devices that I've used. So you have two ways to print. You can either go here, choose USB, or on local storage and print that way. You can also go to your network, enter this IP in your browser. I managed to print these and 
they came out pretty well in the future i'm going to try to print an entire chessboard and chess pieces there are things you can do here you can self-test the drive you can change language settings you can change unload fan settings Now this is a fireplace switch. Now this is a lock that makes sure your switch is stay on and off. It also has this little fire sign here. That's about it. This was the Two Trees SK1 3D printer. It's very easy to use. You just have to slice your files, upload them whether through the online interface or through the USB drive and you can start printing right away. This has a build volume of 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters and it has a speed of 700 millimeters per second. More advanced users can probably do more complex projects with this, but I just wanted to show you how easy this is to use. The guys behind it were kind enough to provide me with this unit to test, so I'm going to link in the description to their official website that you can go and find this 3D printer. Thanks for watching.